For our next uh, technique, we're going to look at stippling. What I've done here is I've sectioned off another area of our paint sample. You can see before we started off with our uh, scumbling technique. Now I've kind of moved over. I've decided to move a couple over to, um, areas over and create a area just for stippling. So I'm using the same colors we used before. I have uh, my burnt sienna, or I'm sorry, burnt umber and my yellow ochre. And I went ahead and added a little bit of white here. Again, you can swap out colors. You can use a whole different palette if you like. It doesn't really matter. But what I've chosen, I want to stick with the same color combinations to show you how paint, even with the same colors, can look very different. All right. And this time, what I'm going to, what I did was I went ahead and did a base coat of paint down using only my yellow ochre, and I used a variation of medium and water to do a nice uh, wet blend. You see it is sort of almost a gradation of a light yellow ochre up to a darker yellow ochre. So this is this is just playing only with one color and medium in order to try to get a gradation. This is what we would call sort of a wet blend. All right. So I'm blending from a, a, a lighter, more transparent to a thicker paint, all with the same color. This is I've let this dry. This is completely dry. I can touch it. And what I'm going to do is I have a clean brush here and I'm going to dip. What I can do is I can take my brush into my palette and kind of splay it out. I want to get it all kind of crunched out, all those bristles to stick out. And I'm going to dab it just the tips directly into the brush or into the paint, right? The brush bristles just in the very tips. Before I go to my, my uh, painting, I'm going to dab a few times on my palette to kind of get rid of the excess paint. And this is this process is, is very time consuming. We typically don't do this in large areas on a set. We might do this on a smaller prop or a smaller area of, of, a, of a set. If it does require stippling on a set, I might use a larger brush like this. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go at perpendicular to the paper and lightly dab. So at the same time, I'm going to twist my brush in either direction. See, I got a little bit of white on here. That's OK, too, because it's planning to use that as well. So I'm going to go perpendicular and dab. And I twist and dab and twist and dab and twist and dab. OK, so this is straight paint. This is undiluted paint. And you get a very a stipple type of texture. I'm going to just keep working my way around the canvas using this sort of stipple technique. Now you'll get different things happening. If you go with a very light touch, you'll get little dots. Okay, so these are like dots. As you press it and the, and the bristles actually start to flay out, you'll get almost a, a linear look to it, OK? So just again, in the, in the paint shop, as you're working uh, sort of in the lab trying to figure out what your technique is, you may have to decide not only your color combination, and the, but also the application. Are we doing light dabs? Are we doing hard dabs? Every, every, each one has its own effect, all right? I'm also going to dip into this white a little bit to show that often we don't just use one or two colors. I dab it. I go use a little bit of medium because that paint is too thick. But sometimes what we do is we had multiple layers of various colors on top of each other to get uh, more texture, more um, interesting looks. So I chose to use white and the burnt umber. That I started off with to give um, more of it now more of a texture. What does this start to look like? Hmm. Well, maybe certain types of stone, maybe granite. You can see that if this, if you have a granite countertop in your home, you might actually see that 
your granite countertop has sort of a stippled look to it. It's very similar, maybe different colors, might be browns, might be grays, uh, might even be blues, um, but it might have a similar texture. You never know, you, your granite counter countertop might look more like this, might look more like a scumble, right? I'm going to go back to my white here. In this case, I'm, I'm using the same paintbrush to do both because I'm kind of liking the mix of color here. I'm getting um, kind of an unusual mix. So this won't win any awards for beautiful paintings, but it does illustrate a little bit on how to use uh, the stipple technique. You just kind of work your way around and you see I have the base color underneath that which was the wet blend gradation of using my yellow ochre and then I've done the stippling technique on top to give it uh, sort of a, some some interesting texture you can work it as much as you want what you don't want though you don't want to cover it to the point that it just looks like a big muddy mess so I don't want to go too much more. This can also be a base technique too. So let's say I am doing some form of um, rock or granite or something on maybe a, a prop statue or um, something to that effect. I might lay this down and then I might do a series of transparent glazes on top of this. Um, I might take a wash or a glaze, probably more like a glaze of the brown or even another brown or another uh, gray or another color, even, even like a, a reddish brown and glaze over this. So now that it will it all feel like it's uh, under, a, under a lens or under a, a, a gel almost. It's almost like it's, it's all seated under one color. So this sometimes is just a, a base color, a base technique for a later technique. Most of these are typically we don't just stick with one technique. We do one and then apply other paints on top of them. Okay, so this is stipple. This is a stipple. You usually use one paintbrush and have a couple different colors that you're working between. And typically you'll dry, let them dry between, but you kind of, it's again a very perpendicular action. Okay, so go out and look for images of anything that you think has a very stipple-like look to it, a stipple-like characteristic. Try to see if you can decipher the colors that are in that. Say it's a granite countertop or um, some other, other thing in nature that has the same kind of look. Even concrete. Concrete may have various uh, grays uh, that have a stippled look to it. Right, they're very close together in value, very, very close together in, in their hue as well. But it might be two or three different grays that are in a very tight set that has a very stipple look to them. So try to experiment with mixing those colors and applying them into a, uh, a sample so that you can see, okay, that way you can practice mixing colors as well as applying a stipple technique and also recognizing uh, when something looks like a stipple technique, so you could reproduce it on stage. All right, good luck with that, and we'll see you on the next one.